Hello there and welcome to Black Jackal Gaming. Today we're going to look at Renegade Raiders Detachment. This is the Red Corsairs Detachment in the Chaos Space Marines Codex. So it's got detachment rules that really set up your ability to hit and run and use plenty of shenanigans to move around. But it does have a mixed bag of enhancements where some of them just aren't really worth taking. It's mostly movement oriented strats which are quite good and there's a couple of durability built in as well. It's got a nice strat for activating the warp talents and that's going to be one of the main things you lean into. So the detachment rule is called Raiders and Reavers and what this does it grants you range weapons for Heretic Astartes models, the assault keyword. What this allows you to do is that if you advance you can still shoot your ranged weapons. As well as this, every time your army makes an attack that targets a unit within range of an objective marker, this is for range or melee attacks, this improves the armor penetration by that attack by one, which is very nice to have. So over to the enhancements, the first one's called uh, Despot's Claim. This is for Heretic Astartes models only. At the start of your command phase, if the barrier is on the battlefield, you can roll 1d6. And you can add one to the result of the barriers wholly within 12 inch of your opponent's deployment. So on a 5+, plus, you gain 1 CP. So if you're in your opponent's deployment zone, you gain a CP on 4+. plus. So it's quite weak, really. You're never going to take this because having to force your, your model to be within their deployment zone puts it in danger just to get that plus one. And the fact that base standard is five plus to gain a CP. So you're only really going to average if this guy stays alive for the entire game, maybe an additional three CP at that. It's probably not worth taking. Then we've got Dread Reaver. This is for Heretic Astartes models. Each time the bearer makes an attack, a melee attack that is, if the bearer is wholly within 12 inches of your opponent's, opponent's deployment zone, you can re-roll the hit roll and the wound roll. So this is very nice, but unfortunately it is only for the bearer, so isn't for the unit. Then we have Mark of the Hound. This is for Heretic Astartes models only. And this grants the bearer's unit the scout six inch keyword, which is very nice to have. Gives you that early game movement and board control. Then we have Tyrant's Lash. This is for your Heretic Astartes model again. You can reroll advanced rolls made for the bearer's unit. And the bearer's unit is also eligible to shoot in a turn which it fell back, which is very nice to have. Allows you to keep the firepower going on throughout the majority of the game. Over to the stratagems, the first one called Unfailingly Obdurate. This is a battle of tactic for 1 CP. And this is during your opponent's shooting or fight phase just after it selected a unit. So this is for a, a Heretic Astartes unit and it is excluding damage units. And you select this once it's been targeted. So until the end of this phase, you worsen an incoming armor penetration by 1. So it's essentially armor contempt. Then we have Scour and Seize, another battle tactic for 1 CP, and this is during the fight phase. And this grants Heretic Astartes, who have not yet fought, um, the ability to make an attack that targets a model or within range of an objective, you'll gain the precision keyword. So this is quite nice to have. So you basically put this on one of your units that's not fought yet, and they get precision, so you can go hunting those characters. Then we have Opportunistic Raiders, Strategic Ploy for 1 CP. And this is at the end of the fight phase. And this is your Heretic Astartes units that are eligible to fight. So if they're not within range of uh, an enemy unit, they can move 6 inches or 12 inches. Otherwise, they can fall back, but they cannot embark on a transport if they've disembarked. What this allows you to do at the end of the fight phase You've either got the opportunity to fall back from outside of engagement range, or if you did manage to kill the unit that you're in engagement range with, you can then move six inches or 12 inches if you're mounted. Then we have warp charge engines. This is war gear for one CP, and this is during your movement phase. So this targets uh, a starty transport or mounted units. And this allows you to, if you advance, you don't have to roll a d6, you automatically advance up to six inches instead. Then we have Ruinous Raid, a battle tactic for one CP, and this is during your shooting or fight phase. And this is for Astartes units that have disembarked. This allows you to reroll hit and wound rolls versus targets within range of an objective marker. So you can essentially throw 
a unit into a rhino, ram it forwards, pop out, and then you get full rerolls to hit and wound against the target that you're targeting on a rejector marker. So quite a nice strat to have, especially for one CP. Then Reavers Haste, a strategic ploy for one CP. This is during your charge phase, and this allows you to target an Astartes infantry or mounted unit. What this allows you to do is be eligible to declare a charge after you've advanced. And if the target is within range of an objective marker, you get plus one to your charge roll. So you essentially get extra movement here. You can advance. You're then still allowed to charge. And if they're within range of an objective, you get plus one to your charge roll, which is very nice. So what buffs and combos can you put in place for this? Well, the Warp Talons, not only are they a great unit anyway, they do come alive a bit in this, this detachment. So you can really light it up with them with their additional AP when targeting a unit on a objective, because then you get minus three AP on your war talents, which is quite a nice break point to have. So for example, if you're going into Space Marines, you're now putting them on sixes to save, which is very nice. So there's the stratagem scouring at seas, which is really nice for them because you can go and hunt some characters and gain your victory points. If you've got assassination or there's a, a, second, uh, a primary or tertiary mission that allows you to score additional points for this. What this does, it gives you precision attacks for your melee. Now you've got a substantial amount of attacks coming in here. So these guys should be able to nuke a lot of characters that are hiding in a unit. There's also a great strat that allows you to activate your ability. So their ability allows them um, at the end of the fight phase, if they're not in engagement range and they were at the start of the fight phase, they can disappear into the sky. So basically what they have to do is get stuck in, kill a unit, and then they can go back up into the air and disappear. Now, if they do get tied up in combat because you didn't manage to kill the unit you went into, you can use our opportunistic raiders, which allows them to fall back, and then you can put them into strategic reserves. So it allows you to keep them around much longer and score those points with them. There's also Revis Haste Strats, so this gains advance and charge. What this is really good for is that if you didn't put them into strategic reserve and you need to bounce around, say you, you, you look at the lay of the land and nothing's going to be able to really target you this turn, uh, sometimes it's more beneficial to use that movement to get a much closer charge, especially if you can have the uh, advance and charge on top of that, which you're going to average an extra four inches of movement, and you get that plus one to charge if they're not on an objective. What this also lets you do is if you do put them in strategic reserves and you pull them down from the sky, if you're targeting something on an objective, you're getting that plus one to charge. So it's an eight inch charge rather than a nine inch. There's also the potential for your turn one charge with them. So if you set them up anywhere on the battlefield and then you've got their, their general movement of 12 inches, they get to advance, which can average in of four inches to take them up to 16 and then charge with your average charge of seven inches to 23 inches. And if they're on an objective, like you're trying to go right into the heart of their, their deployment zone, you get a plus one to charge. So really you're looking at 24 inch threat range uh, at the start of the battle. And this is especially if you go first and then you get that additional AP. So you got minus three AP if they're on, on an objective. You nuke a unit and then you go straight back up into the sky. Very nice to have around. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see any future content. If you want to support the channel, consider picking up a membership on YouTube where you get early access to videos, generally 24 to 48 hours early access, or pop over to Patreon where I do some blogging, I post some memes, and there's a couple of uh, STL file files available for objective markers and light terrain as such. There's free membership over at Patreon as well, so you can just come along to hang out. Or if you want to support the channel, there's some premium memberships along the way as well. Take it easy, watch these other videos, and I'll see you next time.